Greetings, I'm Epictetus, and this is Epic Tech. And today, we are going to learn about how to script without scripting using the Visual Script Builder for Space Engineers by King Baggett. It's a wonderful tool, and I just can't wait to show off what we're going to do today. So today we're going to work on a red alert system. I want this to be as simple as possible, but actually highlight some of the best features of the uh, Visual Script Builder. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that anytime anything is being hacked, which means that it is taking damage, currently taking damage. See, as soon as it drops below that hack line, then it has been hacked. And now, if this hadn't belonged to me beforehand, it would now belong to me. So we want to know if somebody's doing that to our base. And the best way to know about that is if anything's being hacked, then we want all the lights in the entire building to turn red and start blinking. Okay, so let's really quickly jump into the Visual Script Builder and see how to do that. All right, so here we are at the web page, which is dco.pe slash VSB. You'll find a link to that in the description down below. Speaking of which, check that description. If there are any major changes to how things work, and um, it's not very easy for me to let you know about that after the fact, so check the description to see if there are any updates. The first thing we need to do is hit this new script button right here, and then we can get working. Every portion of this script is going to be called a chunk, and all of these scripts are built in chunks. So the first thing we need to do is add a new chunk, and we get a whole bunch of options here. Now, as I said, I want to say if. So if any functional block, that's basically everything in my entire base, is being hacked if equals true. So if it's true that anything in my base is being hacked, and keep in mind, functional blocks are things that actually have something in the terminal, not armor blocks or catwalks or that kind of thing. But not just a specific one, but any block of type. Keep this in mind. Any block of type means any one block or more than one block. While all blocks of type would mean that all of the functional blocks in my entire base would have to be being hacked at that same moment for this to trigger. So we definitely want to use any block of type. We don't need to give it a name or a group, though if you only wanted certain items in your base to be noticed as being hacked, you could actually put a group name in here and then add all of those to a group. I want anything, so I'm gonna leave it like this. We're now done with this first group, and I have a habit, by the way, of closing these categories that I'm not using, so I'm just gonna close properties there. And I'm gonna add another chunk, because we've just told it what, what should trigger this but now we need to tell it what to do. And you'll note that it defaults to do. We now want to set all the lights, like I said, to be red and blinking. So do all blocks of type. And then he has this handy little lighting block, which just counts as all kinds of blocks that emit light. Now we can go down and we don't need this section and we don't need this bottom section. We wanna change the color. So I'm gonna get rid of all the green out of that color and all of the blue out of that color. And then we wanna change the blink interval and length. Oh, I just noticed he misspelled length. Oh, well, anyway. So the blink interval, this is how long it is between blinks. So how long it's dark is gonna be one second, and how long it's going to actually, wait, is that right? I might have this backward. So we're gonna do two seconds on the length. Sounds about right. We can fiddle with this later and, and get it working. Okay, so that's cool. That means that as soon as this starts, or as soon as anything in my base starts getting hacked, all the lights are gonna turn red, and then it's gonna start blinking. But 
when it's not being hacked, when the emergency is over, I don't want to have to go back and set all my lights back again to normal. So we're going to add a new chunk. And on this one, we're going to say else. Okay. Now we could do this one that says else do. And then we could go down and set all of the lights back to white and zeros for the blinks. But there's one issue with that, and that is that hacking is, so the actual initial thing up here, is it being hacked, is while it's being hacked, not necessarily like if it's still damaged and broken. And I kind of don't want this script to go back to white until everything's been fixed. So instead of doing an if and else do, I'm actually going to say else if. Okay. This is going to allow me to say I actually only want this to happen, happen, happen if everything is functional. By the way, is working means is it actually doing something? So is the refinery refining? Is an assembler assembling? Is functional is whether it's capable of working. So let's go ahead and choose true. And in this case, we want all blocks of type. So all functional blocks have to be functioning before we want it to change the lights back. So let's do this. Add new chunk down here. Now we can say all blocks of type, lighting block. Don't need this, don't need this. And we're gonna set the color back to white. Assuming that's the color you use, you can of course change that. And we're gonna set these to zeros, which makes it not blink. That's it. In that amount of time, we just created a script that will do a red alert in our in our system let's go check it out so copy to script by the way this line right here is really important to keep and i'll show you why in a second okay we're back in my world and we're ready to actually get this thing functioning so the first thing we're going to need is a programmable block okay and we can set that down pretty much anywhere in our base and then we're also going to need a timer block there we go. And now we've got a timer block and a programmable block. We can name this whatever we want. I'm gonna call this one PB Red Alert. And I'm gonna go over my timer and call it TB Red Alert. And now here's where we go into the programmable block. We hit Edit, Select All, I use Control A and then control V pastes our code. We can hit check code right here. As long as it says compilation successful, which it should if you use the visual script builder, then okay. Remember and exit. Now we can go over to our timer block and we can set this to whatever delay we want. One second makes the most sense. And then we want PB red alert to be run with default argument and then TB red alert to start. That's it. So that means that each time the programmable block is triggered, it will then also restart the one second timer. And now once a second, it's checking to see if any block is being hacked. So if I get out my trusty grinder here and I walk up to anything and start grinding it down, look at that. Oh. There we go. I didn't get it past the hack line. But now that it's ha past the hack line, we have... Yeah, this isn't... I think this is two seconds and off and one second on. So we want to actually switch those. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and weld this back up again, and the lights turn back on. Just that simple. Let's go fix that blink, though, because I think that's going to get annoying real fast. Uh-oh. Looks like our web page got refreshed. 
and we lost our whole script. But luckily, we've got that first line I told you to keep a hold of. We could go back to the programmable block and copy it out of there as well. But I happen to have it in my clipboard because I come prepared. Load script. I can paste that first line in right here and hit load script, and it'll load back my script exactly the way that we left it. Well, as it turns out, the blink interval is the number of seconds, but the blink length is actually a percentage that it should be dark. So we probably want something closer to 90, as in 90% 90 of the time it's bright, as opposed to one, which was 1% of the time it was bright. That isn't good. So, so two seconds, 90% on, which means it'll be off every two seconds for two tenths of a second. I think that works. Let's give that a try. So copy to clipboard again, and then I'll meet you back in Space Engineers. Okay, so let's walk up to this programmable block, hit edit, control A to select all, control V to paste, check code, okay, remember an exit, and now if we walk up to our timer block and we start grinding it down, there, it's a little bit easier to see like that, isn't it? So this is definitely going to catch your attention, but it's not going to get in your way of going around and fixing things. There we go. And as soon as we fix it, as soon as it gets past that functional line, everything goes white again, back to normal. So there you go. A nice quick tutorial on how to use a visual script or visual script builder for space engineers. And in this case, specifically to make a red alert system, but you can use it for just about anything. I used it recently to create a auto docking system. So this auto docking system works a little bit differently. I've got it set up so that if I press this auto dock button, it disconnects and then reverses the piston. If I click it again, then it reverses the piston again to push back outward. And every second it's checking, actually not just every second, every split second, it's checking for a connection. As soon as it finds that connectable connection, it connects, that's a lot of usage of the same word, and then it stops the piston and during the whole thing, it actually updates these LCDs. There you go. You can make some pretty cool scripts. And I'll leave both the red alert script as well as this autodoc script in the description below. So feel free to check those out and make your own scripts. And if you get something really awesome, post it into the, um, into the comments below. And the best one... I will pin to the top so that everybody can try it out. I'm really looking forward to using this visual script builder more in my Let's Play. So if you want to see more stuff like this, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and hit that little notify bell. And as always, I'll see you next time on Epic Tech.